Okay, let's start. Uh, good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Warren Lecture Series. Today is a very special lecture uh, because it was be given by our colleague, Professor Emmanuel de Tarnay. Uh, faculty, most of the faculty know him well, but new students might not know that Emmanuel is a product of our department in some sense. He got his bachelor degree in Baljum, a University of Liege, but then he came here as a master student and he did his master and PhD degree in the department. And uh, after that, as required, he left department for a while, working for Schlumberger first in the US and then in the UK. And from 1993, he's a faculty member here in the department. And Emmanuel built up a very robust research program here in the department. He has an outstanding students working at the university in academia and industry. And uh, some of them are close to retirement. <laughs> <laughs> That's how long Emmanuel has been here. Uh, Emmanuel, uh, uh, we have to be very uh, kind of careful during his lecture because he has this intuition. He starts an area which becomes then a booming area. That's how it happened with hydraulic fracturing. Emmanuel started to work in this area <coughs> long ago and uh, soon after the revolution in hydraulic fracturing happening. And now he's working in uh, drilling. So we should expect something else happening, but he always exit before all funding pours in. <laughs> so this is also his trademark. But on a serious note, <coughs> Emmanuel has received many significant awards. He is a foreign member of Russian Academy of Sciences, but he was also elected as a foreign uh, member of National Academy of Engineering. He has, uh, he received the Bio uh, Medal for his work uh, in elasticity, I think, mostly. And I will not take more time. Please join me in welcoming Emmanuel. Thank you, Sonia. Um, I had two sources of anxiety before giving this lecture. The first one is that I have not given a Warren lecture for 20 years. Uh, because the last time I gave it was a part of the promotion tenure committee. <laughs> And I hope that uh, people who approve of that no, are not disappointed by what, <laughs> what happened since. And the second uh, source of anxiety was the fact that uh, is, was Sonia going to embarrass me? So I'm <laughs> relieved by that. And thank you, Sonia, to be <laughs> you've been very kind. OK, so um, yeah, so the subject, as uh, you can see, is, is about directional drilling. And I try to give you a bit of the, the story behind it. I just want to point out that I, and I started work about it about 10, 15 years ago, but really the, 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 the contribution from two, two PhD students, I want to say that both of them from, from Belgium, University of Liège, and uh, it's really thanks to the ex uh, outstanding contribution that I mean we came up with something that I think that has some, so, some value. Okay, so uh, directional drilling. So, this is kind of a sketch on, on the left. You can see here that you no know, uh, application of directional drilling. Maybe the, the most important one would be from offshore drilling, where you see from, from a platform, and then you can you drill several boreholes. Or under the salt dome, that's what you can see that on the left. You no, know, you can you cannot drill. It's very difficult to drill through salt. So you have to go around and, and to you know to access the oil reservoir below the uh, the salt dome. But maybe you remember that uh, in 2010, uh, April 20, 20th, there was this disaster with the Macondo well, Deep Horizon platform, there's a blowout. With, uh, I think 11 people got killed in that. And uh, start the process to, to eventually what they call kill the well. And you can see from here that they start drilling you know, about, uh, about one month after those events. And imagine that you have to come and intersect this well and you can see at a depth of about 4,000, 5,000 meters. No? Imagine that the target is about one foot wide, and you have to reach that and intersect that well. No? So that's kind of an example of, of, of uh, the actual drilling. Another one it is the oil shale, gas shale revolution. You can see that no, this has not been possible without uh, the actual drilling. 
where they drill well over a couple of kilometers in the, the, coal, the coal seam. Okay? So you have kind of very complicated trajectory that can be, uh, that can be uh, drilled. Uh, and here are some examples that you can, you can see here. Okay? But I'd like to give, first of all, a very quick history about uh, drilling. And uh, as it's often the case, things start in China, no? Uh, 1,000 one was before the Christ, uh, before era. And apparently, uh, they could reach depth of about 200 meters. It was drilling for water. You know, it's some kind of a it was some kind of a percussion drilling. And I'm going to pass a lot, of, a lot of that, but I just want to show that here that the, the, the person behind rotary drilling, the modern, the concept of rotary drilling, is actually Leonardo da Vinci. First time it was drilled for oil using rotary drilling was in France, in the, the Paris, Paris Basin, now this oil there. And everybody knows about Colonel Drake, Pennsylvania, the first time, uh, it was first drilling of oil in the, in, the, in the US. But the story becomes maybe a bit more interesting as, no, as, it, is, as it concerns uh, the, actual, the actual drilling. Is in 1900 where they realized that no, the, the idea, of course, you can, you, you, you think that you are drilling vertically, at least in, the, in those days, but they realized after some survey that actually the wells were cooked. And you can see here the lateral deviation about nearly as much as the vertical depth. No? Of course, that's very useful if you want to, to suck oil from, from the neighbor, but. Uh, <laughs> But I mean, that's something that people start to, the idea, two things, okay, maybe we can deviate wells, no? We can do it on purpose, no? Here it was done because of the, the fact that the layers are inclined, no? And this deviation due to that. And that led to, uh, to first of all, the first e piece of equipment, very simple, it's called a whipstock. So imagine it's a kind of a wedge that you place in the well bore to deviate the, the bit, okay? And some piece of equipment I think absolutely remarkable, where you have this piece of equipment basically takes a photograph of a, a compass and, and, and inclinometer to measure the inclination of the well bore. It is done at a given time, it's recorded on film, and once that device is put back, uh, brought back to the surface, then it can be uh, analyzed to, 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 look, to do a, what's called a survey of the borehole, see what is the inclination of the well as a function of depth, okay? Modern equipment is late, uh, about 20 years ago, 20, 25 years ago. I'll mention that a little bit more in, in, in a minute. But I just want to say that in the, in the 20th century, there are a lot of patents about equipment uh, to deviate wells. That's the whipstock that I mentioned here, and that's uh, called the mud motor. It's a, it's a, to, that is used, that is used to, uh, to, to drill directional borehole. A lot of equipment, and there's something which, which is common to all of them that none of them really worked. Um, and very, I mean, if you really analyze that very complex piece of equipment, but imagine that this has to work at depth of several thousand meters under very uh, difficult condition. Okay, so. Um, let me first say a few things about uh, drilling for those of you who know little about it. Okay, so that's the that's the very uh, was, that's what is called a rotary drilling system. You have the rig, uh, you have the drill string, and the drill string is composed of two parts: drill pipe, these those kind of hollow uh, tubes, and it can it can reach a length of about ten kilometers. Okay, because of, uh, and then you have the heavy pipes here they are called drill collars. Okay? So what you have to know is that the drill string is suspended. Okay? So what is called the, the actual force on the bit, which is called the weight on bit, is basically the weight of the drill collars, or part of the weight of the drill collars. Okay? okay, so this part, that's the part which is going to be of most interest to us. No? You have stabilizer, and the stabilizer simply centralizes the, 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 the BHA. It is a bottom hole assembly inside the, 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 the well bore. And then you have also a piece of, piece of equipment, very sophisticated. Here people can do, no, companies can do uh, drilling, uh, logging while drilling. No? 
And you have also uh, the system here, which is of most interest for us, which is called the rotary steerable system. Okay? They are basically downhole robots. Okay, there are two types of them. And uh, I'm going to, to really discuss one, one of them in, in, the, in the modeling. One of them is called the push the bit. That is, is kind of the simplest uh, device to build. And it's a remarkable piece of equipment. So it's rotating. No, of course, everything is rotating. So you have pads, typically about three pads, which are extending and retracting. And really, the, the, the goal of those pads is always to push at the on the same location on the borehole in order to deviate the, the, the well bore. Now, what is absolutely remarkable is the fact that the motion of the, the BHA and the bit is not uniform. It's all the time deciliating, accelerating. Most of the time, they stick slip. So you have to imagine that you have control system, and the bit is rotating at about 60 RPM, 100 RPM. So you have to see those control system have to adjust so that <coughs> It's always pushing at the same location on the wellbore wall, okay? And then you have the point of the bit, which basically you have a, uh, you have a sleeve, a sleeve which is not rotating, and then you have a bending of the shaft, which is called tilting of the bit, okay? But that's, I'm going to, to, to discuss essentially about the, the push the bit system. Okay, so uh, what are the issues? As you can see from the talk, I mean, I'm going to focus here on, on this part, but just want to, if you look at this picture here on the left, you have this issue of, of what we call, we call drilling tendency, is that you imagine that you have this force acting on the BHA that is provided by the RSS, the rotary steerable system pad, pushing on the wall, and typically you would like to have the bit deviating on the right, but sometimes deviating on the left. Okay, so the, the question is that, is that why? And, what is, what is controlling that. But I think the most interesting thing for me was what is this borehole, what's called borehole oscillation or, or micro spiraling, or mic micro tortuosity, sorry, and, and spiraling. First of all, you have to, I have to tell you that uh, petroleum engineers, drilling engineers, have a very distorted view of geometry. No? Uh, they have, uh, imagine that the borehole is about something like 20, 25 centimeter uh, diameter and the borehole could be uh, hundreds, thousands of meters. So they, they squash in the uh, actual direction, expand in the, in the lateral direction, okay? So typically what you can see, those associations here, and by, by the way, those are real data. This is a data from what is called a, a density log. Now it's a, a neutron tool, which is able to measure. And you see a lot of regularity, this kind of, a, uh, rings or spirals, and the, the, the distance, the typical distance between those two, two, two rings is about a few meters, okay? And imagine that this, the borehole diameter is about 20 centimeters. You can have an idea about the scale here. Okay. And uh, it's only when, when the, the, there's something very common in, 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 uh, in, in drilling is that the story is happening, of course, very far from the rig, no? several kilometers away. And unless you have done whole measurement, you don't know what's happening. So uh, it's only when fairly recently, about 10, about 10 years ago, that they start to do me measurement at, at high resolution that they realized that actually it was spiraling, that there was some kind of oscillation there, self-sustained os oscillation that in, in mechanics, as I will explain, is coming from some non-linearity in the system, and we call limit cycle. Okay? And so that's so it's actually there pervasive, but nobody knew about it. And of course, that's not a good idea to have to have those kind of spiraling because eventually you have to put a casing, and the fact that you have to cement the casing and the fact that this spiraling uh, is is not conducive to uh, integrity of the of the of the well bore but also is the fact that you are actually drilling, excavating more material. So it, it makes this, the process less efficient. Okay, so, so that's, that's, uh, that's what really I'm, I'm targeting here in this talk about trying to explain what is the mechanism behind it and how can we uh, mitigate that? Okay, so those are the kind of the, the question that, that, that very practical question is that no, what can we do? No. Can we optimize? Can we change the BHA configuration? What I mean by that, 
I mentioned that you stabilize, now we centralize the borehole, and therefore you can start to think, of, you can place to stabilize different location, that's, that's kind of a design consideration. You can think of the bit, no? you can think about how much weight on the bit to, to apply, et cetera, et cetera, okay? And at the end, no, if you want to, rest, to answer this question, you have to come up with a, with a, with a model, okay? A mathematical model to describe what, what's happening. Okay, so, so now what I want to start with you is to discuss how you construct this model. Now, something very interesting, now, if you look at that from the borehole, borehole is, is, is like a tube, it's, but it's, it's evolving. It's evolving because its, it's length is increasing, obviously, but also it has a shape, no? So it's a geometrical object that is being built by a mechanical system. And the mechanical system, you know, it consists of, a, of, of course, the bit, the, the BHA, the drill string, etc. Okay? And the question, therefore, is that how, to, how do we model that? And, and, and really what I want to have is that if I have this geometrical object, you know, which is evolving, what I would like to have is an evolution equation for this object. Okay? And the question is that how to build that. So something it's kind of also curious about, about uh, drilling is the fact that you have, you, know, you have those different scales. You, know, you have the bit at the scale of 10 centimeters, and you can see the BHA 100 meters, several kilometers of drill string. And although some companies do that, they have a computer model which, which, which simulate the whole thing and even the dynamic of the system, but clearly it's not the way to do things. You know, I think there are ways to do things a bit more intelligently. And it's basically to concentrate, okay, what is, uh, at what scale we have to look at that? Well, as I, you will become clear that the scale actually is the scale of the BHA. Actually, this, this part of the, 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 of the problem here, so you, in, in a sense, you don't look at the detail of what's happening at the bit. You encapsulate that in so, some kind of boundary condition. You make a cut here, so you take into account what's happening in the, in the drill pipe, and then you construct a model. Okay, and so the, the really the first model uh, uh, along those lines were done in Germany by, it was in the, in the relationship with the, the KTB hole in, in Germany, scientific hole in the, in the 1990s. And they realized that they want to drill a vertical borehole, but if, if without any type of equipment, the, drill, the, the borehole would be deviated. So that's really the start actually of the modern RSS system that was to tr keep the borehole, the borehole vertical, okay? All right, so, so the, uh, we have that, so let me just introduce a few things here in terms of, uh, you have to be, maybe hurry up a little bit, um, in terms of the, um, in, 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 in terms of the, 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 some of the geometry. So um, whenever you see capital letters, that is the borehole, small letters going to be the bit or the, the drill string, so because remember that we have two objects, no? we have this mechanical object and this geometrical object. And uh, really what we, we, we are the, the way to describe the geometry is the, in, the, in a sense is in the attitude of the bit, so the azimuth and the inclination of the bit, but also the azimuth and the inclination of the borehole at any point. Okay? And here you can, this simple way to, to scale uh, the problem, uh, the scale here comes from the, the length, the distance between the bit and the first stabilizer, and the, the, the scaling of the force comes from basically from, from the BHA, the, 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 the stiffness, the stiffness of the BHA uh, uh, comes into the scaling of, of, of the force here. Okay, so that's the uh, that's the uh, the thing, and what I will uh, want to show to, today is that. So those of you who work with me know that I, I love scaling. <laughs> and so the idea is to say, okay, uh, if you, scaling means that you know, what are the key parameters, the key dimensional parameters that are controlling the problem, okay? And I just want to, to relate, at least for those of you uh, who have an art in, in uh, geomechanics, is that we have what's called tunnel rock interaction, no, no, it's soil structure interactions, so to speak. And look at this very simple system here where you have a, you have a liner here and, and, and the rock or the, the soil. And you can see if you 
want to know if you want to calculate what is the load on the on the liner well to first approximation it is given by it is controlling by the ratio of the rock stiffness to the to the liner stiffness okay and you can see that from this kind of diagram where the the, the medium around the tunnel is unloading you, you are loading the, the 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 liner and therefore the this kind of very simple sol rock structure interaction is controlling by this ratio of stiffnesses okay and the drill, the actual drilling falls exactly in the same same category it's a bit more subtle in terms of what are the stiffness ratio but i will try to explain that but on one hand you can see that the stiffness from the the bha the drill string you now comes from the the bending stiffness the structural rigid the bending rigidity of, of the of the system and a, a pseudo stiffness comes from what's happening at the bit okay and so you are going to see a dimensionless group you no know, eta pi uh, eta is a, is a bit parameter and pi is is a scale weight on bit so to speak which is given here and this dimensionless group is controlling is completely controlling the whole problem even the apparition of oscillation in 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 the system okay so uh, maybe let's let's pass that no it's i would just want to say here that we do some averaging there is no it's a dynamical system in the sense of of what people it's an evolution it's an evolutionary system but it's not dynamics in the sense of newton okay so those things are happening very very slowly they are evolving and therefore we can do it's a quasi static process and so what we can do some, is to do some averaging okay so the, as you will see that the, the the elements of the model are actually very very simple it's it's basic putting together a few a few considerations the first one is that a, a, what i call kinematic relationship so so yeah, we are going to. I am going to describe the bit kinematics, which is really penetration. So the bit is penetri penetrating the rock, you know, and of course it is the bit which is creating the borehole. So you can see that the the the, 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 the motion of the bit is going to eventually affect the the borehole geometry. Okay. All right. So the next step is to introduce bit rock interaction. In a sense, you are bringing the mechanics here because. As this bit is penetrating the rock, it requires force on that. And so the force on the, the bit, well, is going to influence the bit kinematics, but also it's going to depend on the next thing that I'm going to present, which is the, the BHA. Okay? So here you have bit rock interface laws. Because you think of that as constitutive equation for, for the interface. And then we have the, 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 the most classical part of the, of the system, which is the BHA. It's basically a beam, no, it's a Euler Bernoulli beam. And what you can see that if you are trying to force, remember that the stabilizer are, is, are forcing the, 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 the BHA to be inside the, the borehole. <coughs> and this borehole is curved, so therefore that by forcing that, uh, that uh, you have this geometry constraint, <coughs> you're affecting the, the, force, the, force, the force at, at the bit. Okay? So you can see that the, the geometry of the wellbore is going to influence, obviously, the, the force at the bit. Okay? So you can see that this is the, the basically the, the loop, no? the, 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 the three parts, which I'm going to discuss in, 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 a, in, a, in, a, in more details. But what leads to, and that's in the sense that the whole story here, is delay differential equation. And the physics is actually very simple. So remember, the, the bit is creating the borehole. But the stabilizers are moving into an existing borehole, and the location of the sta sta of those stabilizers is affecting what's happening at the bit. So you have a feedback. So you have you have uh, not a time delay as it is usually the case when we look at delay differential equation, but you have a spatial delay. Okay. So what has happened there is going to affect what's happening here. Okay. And that comes to a class of equation that. We are not used to that here, maybe, except our colleagues, perhaps, in, in uh, transportation. And I just want to, it's coming from, from so my colleague, by the way, also from Belgium, University of uh, Brussels here, uh, who has written a very wonderful book on delay differential equation, and gives an example of uh, what's the difference between ODE and DDE. Well, the first one I hope that everybody can solve. Uh, 
And uh, you make a small, and OK, what is the first one telling you? Is that the rate of change is a function of the state of the system right now. But if you make a small uh, modification, you put here a toe, here, which is a delay, a time delay, meaning uh, yeah, telling us that uh, I t what I'm telling you is that the rate of change is a function of what has happened in the past, then you get something which is much more interesting. Because then you have a system which has bifurcation. This simple equation can show that depending on the parameters, you have k, which is this kind of uh, amplification, and tau, which is the delay. So uh, depending on the value of the product, you have some kind of exponential type de delay, decay, sorry. Or you have oscillation, which are going to damp out, or oscillation, which are going to, to, to blow up. Okay? And again, this is, is, is an example given the book of Ernaux, is that uh, a good example is that if you take a shower in the morning, you know, and then you, uh, you, you are acting on the faucet, it takes some time for the water to come from the faucet to the, to the shower uh, uh, head, and you also, you can act, change slowly, rotate slowly the, the, the faucet, or you can do, uh, you can move it uh, by too much. So <laughs> if you are very active, no, what you are going to say is too cold, you are going to move the, the faucet too much, it's going to be too hot, and vice versa, so it's going to oscillate. But if you make a small motion, then you are going to get to something like this. Okay? And so uh, delay differential equations are everywhere. No? Uh, uh, vehicle uh, modeling, no? uh, vehicle following mod models, uh, economics, uh, population dynamics, they are there. No? Interestingly, is that 20 years ago, when I really I started to look at for another problem, those, those type of uh, equation, there were hardly any books, only a few books on delay differential equation. Now there has been an explosion the last few years on that. And the proof of this that now if you open the MATLAB or Mathematica software, so they are solved for delay differential equations. They were not there 10 years ago. Okay? All right, so, so that's the, uh, the, the essence. So let me give you a couple of, uh, couple of ideas what is uh, behind. It's a very strange boundary condition at uh, the bit rock interaction because what is conjugate to the force is uh, what we call penetration variable. Is that how much the bit penetrates over one revolution. And you, to first order, you can have kind of a linear relationship. I just want to attract to the fact that bits are blunt. So F1 is the actual, what we call the weight on bit. D1 would be the actual penetration. And you have a term here because, in general, the bits are blunt. You can see that from, from the cutter here. No? Those, those bits are drilling for, for hundreds of meters, thousands of meters. So they develop a, some, some bluntness, which have to be taken into account. No? So you, you, have, you have that. And, then, uh, and that brings to me kind of a, one of the key, pa key parameters, which is this, what we call uh, lateral steering resistance. In a sense, if you can, this, the picture of the bit with the force and the displacement, the penetration vector, gives the, the story. The bits are designed to drill in the actual direction. So if you apply a force which is inclined on, on, on the bit, then it's not going to be collinear. No, the bit is going to, to, to try to, 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 to drill in, in, in the actual direction. Okay? And by how much the deviation is, and that is, in a sense, characterized by this parameter eta, which tells you how easy it is to, to drill in the actual direction versus the lateral direction, will depend on what we call the gauge. No? And these are, these are all kind of bits designed where you have long gauge, short gauge, active, passive, etc., etc. Okay? And then I introduced this other parameter pi. So eta is the bit <laughs> constant. Pi is a control, in a sense. This is the weight on bit. But only part of the weight on bit is used to drilling because you have, you have this contact problem. So it is that part which is the, what we call the act, what I call the active weight, which is controlling the problem. So it is, you can see that the scale, so eta pi is the, the key parameters that is control, controlling that. Let me just pass that uh, uh, at this stage uh, for sake of time. Okay. Um, so, so when you put all of that together. What you find is that uh, when you put together kinematics and, 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 and those penetration uh, law, 
then you find that the lateral force acting on the bit is proportional to the tilt. The tilt of the bit is how much it is inclined relative to the borehole. And the factor of proportionality is this eta pi. Okay? So that's, that's what is coming out of that. Let me also pass the, uh, the other one. Okay? And so, uh, so here is kind of more the explanation of what this group means. No? So you can see here the, the meaning of, of this size, this tilting of, of, of the bit in the ball. So it's purely, when you look at that, it's purely what's happening at, 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 the, at the bit. No? And, uh, and the other part, of course, is the drill string. So you imagine that you have a very simple system with only one, one stabilizer, and you try to, to tilt the, the, the bit. Uh, well, you are going to generate an actual force, which is uh, proportional to EI and inversely proportional to L1 square, okay? So yeah, basically you can see that you're contrasting two things. You're contrasting this kind of pseudo stiffness of the, interf of the bitrock interface with the, the bending stiffness of, of the BHA, okay? And so it, what does that mean? It means that, well, if, imagine for example that the system is very rigid, so EI is very large, so eta pi is very small. It means that you are pushing here, you are going to go in that direction. But if the system is very flexible, eta pi is la very large, then you are going to bend the BHA and you are going to move in that direction. Okay, so that's the kind of very simple uh, mechanics here. Okay, and the last part is, uh, sorry, is the most classical one. It is Euler Bernoulli beam. So we, we have, you have the force at at the bit, then you can express that in terms of the loading, and the loading is, the, is a geometry constraint in the borehole. It's the easy part because it's a linear system. Okay, so you have coefficient that you can calculate, it's very classical, um, and you can calculate, so, but you can calculate in a sense the force and moment at, at the bit, at the point, as a function of all the loading. Okay? So you put that together, no? You say, here's the bit, I have re expression here, here's the, the BHA, I just put them together, and out of that, after some manipulation, you get this, uh, you get this uh, delay differential equation, okay? So what are these? So just look at this, for example, that is the, the inclination, this is the curvature, and you can see that the curvature here is a function of the delayed inclination of the well bore, and you have also some kind of average here, so actually, the way we do it, we differentiate one more time. So we have an evolution equation for the curvature. And then you have theta prime here, and then you have theta here. Okay? And that is called a retarded, uh, a retarded delay differential equation. Okay? It has certain properties, mathematical properties. Okay? And uh, if I just give maybe just first a, a quick simulation, it's, it's extreme, it's just to... to, uh, to uh, to show you what, what's happening, no? Uh, so, so what has happened there is that at, at one moment one put a step side force by the RSS, which is causing a deviation of, of the ball, as you can see. It is a kink initially. And you can imagine that those are, this is the change of the, of the curvature. And you can see that each time that's the delay, each time the, the one of the stable, like, so there's a kink initially, then when the stabilizer comes and counters that king, there is another, uh, there is another perturbation to the system. We can show that, we know that with the type of neutral, sorry, a retard differential equation that you know, the, the, it, is, it is becoming smooth and smoother with, with, uh, as the system is evolving. And eventually what was going to happen, the system comes in this particular case to a stationary solution which is characterized by a certain inclination. So in a sense, what has happened there, you, 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 you balance the gravity force on, on, on the weight, on, on, on the BHA with the, the RSS force, no? And I have no time to discuss that. I, I just, because the, the, the sh there must be some kind of a, a scaling analysis behind this. I just want to tell you that the, the, the delay differential equation happens, see, this is the scale, remember that the reference length is the distance between the bit and the first stabilizer, okay? 
So at, at, that, at that scale, you see it association, but at the very small scale and the long range, you don't see association. Actually, you can prove that is those delay differential equations in the, in, for, for, uh, in the small scale and the large scale actually degrades into ordinary differential equation. And that's why you are losing the, the feedback. So the feedback takes place only at that scale. And that's something important to know for people who do control, okay? Because that's where you, uh, you have to act at that scale. Okay, so now, uh, so now we can do, we have an equation, that's a good, the good thing. We don't have something like finite element analysis where you, can, you are moving your you, you BHJ point by point, but you have an evolution equation that you can analyze for, for parameters. And because of the delay term, uh, you have, you don't have, as you know, in, in differential equations, you have characteristic polynomials. Now you, you throw an exponential type solution. But here, because of the delay, you get to the exponential. So mathematicians call that, I don't know why, they call that quasi-polynomial. But the, the, the big difference with polynomials, you have a, a, a finite number of roots. But here, you have an infinite number of roots. It's an infinite dimensional system, actually. The good news is that, we can, again, mathematicians have proven that you have always a point here where all the roots are on the left. Okay? So what you need to track, you need to track to understand we, whether or not the system is going to be stable. Remember that you throw an exponential here, and you want to know if the real part of, this, uh, of that term, uh, of, of the root, is going to be, uh, is going to be positive or, or, or negative. If it's negative, then all the perturbations are going to decay. If it's positive, they are going to amplify. So you really want to know under which condition it is going to, to bifurcate. And that's when the rightmost roots you know, of the, the, this quasi-polynomial are going to cross the, the, the imaginary axis. Okay? And that's called hop bifurcation. So I can analyze, and I think that was one of the most uh, rewarding aspects of this work, is that what you find is that the Eigen solution, which are corresponding to this bifurcation mode, where you have this marginal stability here, actually helix, exactly what you see in the field. And not only that, but the, the, the wavelength of the helix corresponds to exactly what we see in the field. It is basically related to the distance between the bit and, and the first stabilizer. Okay? And if, I, if we look at the situation, okay, I, I forgot to mention that the bifurcation parameter it is eta pi. And, uh, so while you're in, in the condition where it is, uh, it is marginally stable, then you can show that the movement of the, I should use this, no? Sorry. So it is like, uh, it is viewed from the point of view of the BHA, those are the bit, the stabilizer. And, and this uh, rigid motion part, of course, remain that the, the BHA, of course, is turning onto itself because it's, it's drilling. But this is the shape, it is the shape, and this shape is it's a rigid body like. Uh, uh, motion of that, rotation of that shape, and it's causing, that is causing the rippling uh, in both planes. So it is this helix type. So remember that those, those, those stabilizers are forcing the bit, the, the, the drill string to be exactly centered on, on, on that. So this perturbation is it's a self-sustained oscillation uh, of, of, the, of the system. But here, because it's, no, it is a bit cheating because it, it lo we look at the marginal case. So if you move a little bit the, 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 the roots to the right, then you are going to have blow up of the equation. Okay, and that's what you, you will see in, in, in a minute. Okay, and so we can then create a stability diagram, which again you find this eta pi as, uh, as the, the bifurcation parameter. It is for a very done for a very simple system where you have only two stabilizers. And this lambda 2 is the ratio of the length, no? But what you see, which is very typical in delay, in delay system, you have this kind of lobes. But the important thing is that we have a stability limit above, so eta pi above a certain value. And remember that eta pi, we can calculate something is function of the properties of the system, OK? Um, so above a certain value, the system is stable. And below a certain value, it is unstable, and you get uh, a spiraling. Okay? 
and you can do no time, not time domain, but I mean, because there's no time. Uh, the boho length is the, uh, is the evolution parameter. And what you can, you can see is that indeed, no, you can find that indeed the system uh, uh, indeed uh, responds, no, if it's stable, if eta pi is larger than this bifurcation value. This is absolutely crazy, of course, because it's a linear stability analysis. There's no attempt to do, uh, this is unphysical, no? But, but I will explain, I will explain how to introduce physics, uh, I think, in a minute, okay? And uh, so for a long time, it was, complete, it was a game because now we, we, okay, we start to, to think about it. But it's only when we, we, we got field data from BP and it was kind of a chance encounter that I start to believe that there was something in this model. Okay? And here is, a, so this is the eta, this is the this actual this, uh, active weight on bit. So in a sense, remember that the bifurcation parameter is eta pi. So in a sense, for, for drilling engineer, we are breaking that in, in two. So here's R, and so the, the eta pi equal constant corresponds to this kind of hyperbole. Okay, so you can say that now for a given system here, so this is a tangent trajectory, so it's a trajectory which is straight and inclined about, in this case, about 50 degrees. And so you can separate on the basis of, of the, all the information that we have, we, well, we can separate on the, on the basis of the, 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 the position of the, the stabilizer, we can calculate what is the stability limit, okay, which is here. And there's another parameter there that uh, don't pay attention to that. Being unstable here, if the system is here, it's unstable, this there is stable, this is the bit, and this is the control, so you wait on bits, okay? This was observed in, in, in by the, the neutron tool, and you can see again this incredible regularity. Remember that you're looking at, 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 at real data from, from, from rock, you know, showing, showing this incredible regularity, this limit cycle. We, we have to, whenever we deal with, with geomechanics, you know, we have to make some estimate of parameters, we never get them for free, but you can, you, can, you can have a sense where you are, so the, the size of the block here gives you an idea of the uncertainty, but clearly it is an unstable regime, so it, in a sense, no, it is not, it is coherent actually with the observation. But we have another case which was, which was really telling, and that was a case where we could, again, another system because building, that means that you are increasing the inclination of, of the well bore. Here again, this uncertainty, but we could locate that here, but what we found in the data is that they drop the weight on bit for a given section here, and that's where the spiraling takes place. And the weight on bit dropping means that you are going to go like that. You increase the, the weight on bit again, you are back here. Okay. And that is, was, the, 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 in a sense, the, the proof for us that, that there, was, there was something uh, in, this, in this model. Okay, let me, let me pass that. Uh, I don't have time for this. I just want to say two words about uh, the model. So in a sense, it's a linear model, okay? Because, um, yeah, it's, it's linear. But you can introduce a nonlinearity in the, this relationship between the tilt of the bit and the lateral force. Now, remember that I assumed that it is uh, proportional, but data, uh, lab data show that this a maximum tilt, no? So you have this kind of essential nonlinearity that you can introduce. You have maximum tilt in, in the bit. So now you can actually put that in the model. And when you do that, uh, so let me just go here, no? Uh, you get indeed, then you get a true limit cycle. Okay, so you can see from here the inclination as a function of, of position. And you see that those type of, you have the bit and the borehole, but you see that those are the association of the well bore, the borehole. But because of the nonlinearity, no, you don't have blow up, no? You have, the system is unstable, so it starts to grow, and then it eats the, 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 the nonlinearity, and the nonlinearity then causing this type of, of uh, kind of uh, uh, screw, t screw thread shape, okay? And again, those are, those are again, a reconstruction of the well bore geometry. Uh, when do some, not as regular as some of the cases I've shown, but I mean, still pretty regular, okay? Okay, so 
I'm done. Uh, I think that, uh, yes, I think the, the fact that those, those field, we had, I mean, we were very lucky. I tried for years to get field data. It's nearly impossible. I mean, I think that Handel, I think that can confirm. It was absolutely a chance encounter that, that I will tell the story, but not when it is being recorded. <laughs> 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 so, so now, how, how to mitigate? So, so a, as an engineer, well, you can start to play with the, the bit design, so you can, you can change the bifurcation limit. No? You can start to play with the, B, the BHA, location of stabilizer. But, but you know on the control parameters, you can, then you can say, okay, oh, 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 I oh, to change this setup, I well, we can change the bit, okay? We can change the, the, the weight on bit. Where is an issue, so for example, when you look at this parameter, what's happening is that the system could be stable, and because it's wearing, the, the weight on bit, the active weight on bit is decreasing, and therefore it becomes unstable, okay? So, something that I dreamed that people start to do some, some, some tests, but uh, to, start to try to measure these essential parameters. And I just want to say a few words about extension. So uh, I had a fantastic student from, a uh, master student from, from Holland, uh, who did, who extend that work, uh, nonlinearity by taking to account the fact that the stabilizers are not perfect, no? There's some gap between the stabilizer and the borehole, and that introduced another nonlinearity in the system. But um, this also, and that is really work with my colleague at Eindhoven, it's control algorithm. Um, and it's not my, my field, but I'm, I'm feeding, I'm upstream, I'm feeding a, a model. But the idea is, is very clever in a sense, no? What they do, no, remember that it becomes unstable when the roots of the characteristic roots are moving to the right, so now you devise a control algorithm to push the roots to the left. And you can do that on the base of, of measurements. Okay? So that is the, the, that's where the work is going. Um, some of the reference here. I think the, the, the more fundamental part of the work you know, uh, is the first, first reference there. It's only a 2D. Uh, we have, have not got a chance yet to, to finish... Uh, the 3D version, but the 2D is there. Uh, application in, in the SPE literature, and then, then that's more the work of my colleague, uh, Nathan van der Waal, who is doing control. And uh, okay. So on that, uh, thank you for your attention. And <laughs> so we have time for questions. Uh, thank you so much, Professor De Tourney, for your informative talk. I have two uh, basic questions. Uh, first, I ask my second question. Uh, excuse me, if, if my... I did, I did know that was the second. But <laughs> <laughs> if my question is uh, trivial, excuse me. Uh, is there any case that the, uh, the bits go uh, upward? instead of going downward or horizontal. Yeah, yeah, so it, that is called uh, um, building. No, that's called building uh, BHA, they call it. No, they, they, they move the, the stabilizer in such a way that, in a sense, imagine that between two stabilizers, because of the weight of the, of the weight, and if the stabilizer are far enough, then it's going to sag, and that will cause the, the, the bit to go. And that's, what they, that's the way in the past, they were building, you know, increasing the inclination. So you go from vertical, let's say, to incline horizontal. Okay? And you have what they call so dropping BHA way. It is the other way around. Okay? So you move. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. my imagination is not that bad. <laughs> my second question is that uh, how do comp drilling companies choose the location of the drilling point if they have options? Uh, in you the mean field. Where, where the rig is or where the bit has to go? Well, the, both, where they start and where the path is. Because they have many options uh, in terms of uh, the, the path, for example. They have many layers, geology layers. They have a hard rock, rock, soft rock. They can approach 
the field in many uh, paths. Yep. So which path do they choose? Yep. Do they like to go from a rock, a hard or a soft? Where do, do they choose? Okay, so, so I mean, the, the, the seismic survey will tell you about the, the faults, no? Uh, so let's say that you have the case where you have salt dome. Obviously, salt dome is the, that's the place where you have to, to be outside the salt dome and, and, and start to drill. But you, if you don't have any salt dome, to first approximation, things are more or less the same, no, in the lateral direction, not exactly true. And maybe you, you may want to avoid some major faults. Um, I think that's, that's the way it, is, it, is, it would be done, yeah. Thank you so much. There must be a question from Randall. <laughs> I'm certain you showed me, but at the time probably it was early in the talk, so I didn't know what I was saying. How do the rock properties, wh what do the rock properties enter into this whole analysis? That's a, it's a great question. <laughs> and that is what the fight that we had with BP, because they, you're right, they don't enter, except in one place, and it's hidden. It's in, 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 in the, in the, uh, where the blunt part of the bit is. So if you have, so you have part of the weight on bit which is carried by the, by the wear flat of the bit. And you can imagine if, if, uh, if a rock is stronger, then it will be more difficult, you know, uh, to... Uh, so which parameter was that? Is that the eta? Yeah, uh, no, it is in the, the active weight. But, but, but uh, drilling engineers were absolutely sure that it was associated with the, 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 uh, the rock I directly. But in the fact, you are comparing. You are comparing what's happening to the, uh, laterally to what's happening. Actually, it is the same rock, and anisotropy is, is, is irrelevant. Yeah. OK, maybe one more question. <coughs> Um, it seems like, so you show that the eta pi was more of a curve, um, and there was a region where it was stable and there's a region where it was unstable. Is there any value in just keeping, setting the situation such that it's always in the stable region as opposed to on that curve? Yeah, so, 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 <laughs> okay. So the question, so there are two things. You, you don't want to be unstable. If it's unstable, then you get this micro tortuosity. So you want you want you want to be stable, and here is the kind of interesting part because if again if you look at the this eta pi, what is behind it, you have the the i, which is the the moment of inertia, and you, if you look at that part, then you, you know you have small bit, large bit. So you if the system is if you have large bit, then you have very large inertia. Okay. Actually, you can show that the first approximation that i is going to depend on the diameter to the fourth power. Okay. So what you tend to to have is that system with large bit, no BHA with large bit, are going to be unstable, but not the one the, the small bit because they are flexible enough. And then you have another issue which I didn't have time to cover, which is this, this kind of counterintuitive uh, tendency. But now with control algorithm, uh, I mean modern control algorithm, then you can actually kill that even though you are in, in, in the unstable region, no? But the, the control can, can get you out of, of instability. Okay, maybe if someone wants to ask last, last question. And if not, the, oh, I <laughs> And it is, it is probably true that dynamics doesn't have any effect on that. But we have heard before talks about sleep and, and stick conditions. So maybe it has effect only on the rate of drilling rather than on the direction. I'm not sure. No, uh, you, you bring an interesting point. So, so the first thing to recognize is that you, you, have, you have what we call separation of time scale. No, those things are happening very slowly, you know, and dynamics is, is at the scale of, uh, let's say, of one second, which is the rotation speed, you know? and, and stick slip is happening at, the, at that scale. So what can happen, indeed, is the fact that you, you have different modes of dysfunction. 
But the one mode of this function is what is called whirling, a backward whirling of the bit. And backward whirling is causing an enlargement of, of the, the borehole. So in my view, at least, what is happening is that, in a sense, you are creating the dynamics is, is creating an extra gap, an extra an, an enlargement of the, 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 of the well bore, which, of course, as indirectly is going to affect the stability, because then the stabilizer has some gap. No? So it's in that, in that kind of a indirect way that the dynamics, I believe, no, uh, I, uh, is, 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 is coming to the play. But I don't believe that it is a direct, because it's yeah, looking at something which is happening over time scale of hours, let's say, one hour, and compared to something that's happening at the scale of one second. Okay, now we take advantage that the manual is around, unlike most of the speakers. So if you have more questions, you can find him <laughs> in the department. And please join me in thanking.